as an engineer. Um, and, uh, well, along with a team of my folks at Pioneer Astronautics, have been working on a new Mars mobility system, which we call the gas Okay. Now, uh, the gas hopper is the concept for uh, long-range mobility on Mars. Uh, and it's basically a rocket plane that uses carbon dioxide as its propellant. And uh, so the first thing it does uh, is it runs a pump to acquire carbon dioxide, which is 95% of the Martian atmosphere. And it, it liquefies it from compression, um, compressed to around 10 bar, 150 psi. Um, you will liquefy it on Mars. Uh, so then when you have enough uh, of it, uh, you have a, um, a pellet bed uh, that you heat up with some electrical resistance heaters, and the heat from that could come from uh, radio isotopes or from solar energy, um, to create a, a, basically a can filled with hot rocks. And then, then and the CO2, which is self-pressurized, goes through the hot um, head of pellet bed, is heated to high temperature vapor, and exhausted out of rocket nozzle to produce thrust. That's the basic idea. Um, if you had this on a, um, uh, a Mars craft, you might uh, have some ventral uh, thrusters to allow you to take off vertically like a Harrier aircraft, and then a horizontal thruster to induce horizontal motion for flight. And as you can see in this particular example, it uses solar power, which is located on the wings. Um, that's where you get the electricity. So it flies. And uh, the flight distance is not that far, about 100 kilometers, as you'll see. Um, uh, but, so this is not a high performance propulsion system, it's a low performance propulsion system. But the virtue of it is that it uses no consumables. Or, or the only consumable that it uses CO2, which is readily reacquired from Mars. So it flies a hundred kilometers, so then it lands, and perhaps let loose a little rover to do some local exploration, while it runs its pump and acquires more CO2 to prepare itself for the next flight. So it takes off and lands, takes off and lands, uh, and that's why we call it the gas hopper. Um, all right, now, uh, people vary in their technical but the, the uh, primary uh, metric that one uh, measures the performance of a rocket with, or one of the primary metrics, is known as specific impulse, or ISP, impulse specific. And um, space shuttle main engine can get 450 seconds specific impulse. That's it's measured in seconds, which is the number of seconds a pound of repellent yields a pound of thrust. Uh, by comparison, a German V2 in World War II gives you 220 seconds. The dawn of the age of liquid rocketry. Well, a CO2 rocket doesn't even do that. Um, as you can see, if we have a uh, pellet temperature of, say, um, 1,000 Kelvin, 700 centigrade, uh, you're looking at a specific impulse on the order of um, 140 seconds, which is really low, okay? But as I say, we're not going for performance here. We're going for something which is um, optimized for the Martian environment. And uh, you wouldn't use uh, a mule to do race horse racing with, it would be, uh, not for people, but it would be much better than a race horse for a, a mountain, mountaineer who's prospecting. You would walk the scrub as uh, adapted climbing on mountains. Um, and so that's what this is. It's not a, a race horse, it's a mule. Um, now, you could make a gas hopper that was strictly uh, ballistic in its flight, that it didn't have wings, it just takes off like a rocket and lands on its tail, uh, and get some performance. Uh, talking, uh, mass ratio is the ratio of a rocket wet, its weight wet, to its weight drop. Uh, now, high performance rockets like uh, Atlas or something might have a mass ratio on takeoff on the order of eight. Uh, but uh, this thing, because the pellet bed is heavy, is unlikely to have a mass ratio greater than two. And um, what you 
see, well, it depends on the temperature that you manage to get, but if we stick with our 1,000 Kelvin as our nominal rate, because that's not too bad, 700 centigrade, you can build everything out of steel, and, and no, the materials are not challenged by the temperature, there's no particular engineering issues. Uh, if you go to higher temperatures, you know, 1,400 K, then, then you start weakening the steel and so forth. But let's say 1,000 K, which is the square. Well, then, let's say if you had a mass ratio of 2, you'd have a hopping range of 40 kilometers. Even with a very bad mass ratio of 1 and a half, you'd still have a hopping range of 15 kilometers. Uh, and by comparison, for example, the Mars rovers, which of course has been a tremendous success, uh, operating now for uh, five years, when their design lifetime was two months, uh, they still have, have, have only traveled around 10 kilometers each over this entire period. So even 15 kilometers in a single hop, I mean, that's 15 kilometers done in half an hour, um, and it's not blocked by uh, ravines and crevices or any other terrain and obstacles, that's very good. 40 kilometers is much better. But if we put wings on the thing, do much better still. Uh, so once again, okay, uh, the black is black is eight. And let's take a mass ratio of 1.8. Well, that would be a flight of 250 kilometers. That's true long-range mobility. Um, and that's why the wings are interesting. The wings basically extend the flight compared to the ballistic vehicle um, by about an order of magnitude, because it basically is extending it somewhat in proportion to the lift over drag of the aircraft, which can be order of 10. All right, so you need um, uh, materials that can store a lot of heat without weighing too much. Well, the obvious thing is to look for materials with a high specific heat. And, uh, well, the highest specific heat would be uh, lithium. Uh, it's tremendous. Uh, and, uh, by the way, for comparison, the specific heat of CO2 is 930. So here's lithium. Uh, it's like 3,500, about four times as much, which basically means is that one unit of lithium could heat four units of CO2, um, which would imply that you could get a mass ratio approaching four, which, as you can see, would be great. Uh, but lithium is very uh, undense, uh, and so some other materials might suggest themselves as being better, boron, beryllium, even aluminum, uh, as the heat bed material. In fact, however, there's an entire array of, of choices, uh, dozens of, of candidate materials that one could discuss. Uh, lithium fluoride salt, got a very high specific heat, so forth. In our experiments, we have found that you need to use magnesium oxide uh, because it's entirely chemically inert. All right, so we were given some money from NASA to attempt to develop a, a, a prototype gas hopper airplane. Uh, and, uh, well, we, while we're interested in both horizontal and vertical flight, in a vehicle that, this was a, a program that we did, we did this for $70,000, which may seem like a lot of money in real life, but in a NASA program, it's very small. Um, and uh, the, uh, given the, the limits of the funding, the limits of the time, which was six months, and uh, the fact that we were operating on Earth in a one-gravity environment, it was not possible to try to integrate vertical and horizontal flight into the same vehicle. Rather, what we did was build two separate vehicles, one capable of doing vertical flight and the other capable of doing horizontal flight. And uh, this is the design of the aircraft. And you'll see later the actual aircraft. And uh, it, it really corresponded fairly close to this, both in terms of overall configuration and in terms of the estimated weight, which was 100.